Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Good evening, and welcome to the wide, wide, wonderful world of vortex-based mathematics, a field of study that I'm very familiar with, even though mathematics is a field I hold no degree in, nor have a full grasp of. Fortunately, I don't think that is a requirement for vortex-based mathematics. In fact, I know it isn't. Now, before supporters of this idea get their panties all in a wad, let me just say that I think science needs to consistently be forward-thinking and that new ideas and any new hypothesis should be examined and tested and not just arbitrarily tossed aside. I also think that we should all look at the facts before making any judgment as to the validity of the claims of vortex-based mathematics. And this brings us to the man who created it, Mr. Marco Roden. Now, Marco appears to be an intelligent, open-minded, and creative individual. He also appears to be a man with no history prior to around 1990. There is no stated doctorate by Mr. Roden from some institution of higher learning. In fact, there's no stated academic background at all from him, and no biography that I could find anywhere. All that has been offered by Marco is the occasional reference to professionals from several scientific disciplines and fields that have asked for his help and that he has worked with. As it turns out, most of these people don't exist. It gets to be a bit frustrating when attempting to piece together Mr. Roden's life. For all we know, he may have been born and raised in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, a student that attended Bridge Academy High School prior to dropping out his junior year, after which obtaining a delivery job with Fred's Appliance Repair down on North Monroe Street in Spokane, Washington. But regardless of who Marco was or what his profession prior to his miraculous incarnation, I believe him to be a stark, raving lunatic the evidence for which is highlighted within his own creation, vortex-based mathematics. So what is vortex-based mathematics? Well, in the simplest sense, it's numerology based upon spirituality and religious myth. You know, like real science. Now take a look at this design. A circle with numbers 1 through 9 around it with some geometric shapes inside. Now, what does this mean to you? Or if you've seen it before, uh, what did it mean to you when you first saw it? Well, it meant nothing to me. I'm sure that if a mathematician saw this, it would mean very little to him or her other than a passing interest in the relationship between the shapes and numbers, but that's about it. Essentially, it's useless until Marco tells you what it means to him. In other words, it's not about the image or the numbers. It's about his interpretation of it that matters, and his interpretation is expected to be the correct one. The problem is that there is no evidence to support it. Well, let's see what's so scientific about this design that Mr. Roden claims he discovered. So here's, here's the point. I predicted that I had found an energy that has never been seen before. I predicted that this energy had endless names. It could be called dark matter, dark energy, tachyon, monopole. Some, every one of you have heard maybe one of the names, an ether, except it's an inertia, inertia ether. Um, in religions called spirit, prana, chi, tachyon. And I claim that this energy is irresistible, penetrates everything, it is the source of all motion, vibration, and time. And so, um, I claimed that the, the ratio of this energy was one part of spirit, I like to call it, which is a little strong, because not only is there an energy shooting out of here, but it's a thermal process. This whole thing is a heat sink, but the binary code does not exist. It's a pretty big claim. The minimum, minimum amount of parts of anything is three. The binary code is curving and warping like the universe around something invisible. 
There's an invisible spindle, and it is right here. The nine is invisible. It's always there. It's the third part, and it's actually the control. Harmonic shears, which is, which is um, the grain of everything. Like wood has a grain, and it's called the underpinning geometry of the universe. And with this, understanding what we already have had and what we've already known, you could figure out every secret in the universe. On his website, Mr. Roden tells how he discovered the number nine. He describes how he was seeking the mystical intonation of the most great name of God after becoming a believer in the Baha'i faith. <sighs> That's special. He converted the name of God, which is Abha, by converting the letters of the Arabic language into numbers as they appear in the Abjad numerical system. Now, in his translation, Roden found that A equals 1, B equals 2, H equals 5, and A equals 1, for a total of 9. So, the starting point, the main concept for this whole idea of his, came from the very scientific source of the Baha'i faith. Bear in mind, I'm discussing the motor. This is the motor. This is the invention. It's the same symbol upside down, connected. They both connect to one. And forgive me for being gothic, but one God, one universe. It really, it's really, all this is just a chain reaction. One neutrino liberates two, liberates four. This is how God created creation, the universe. Now, regardless of how many times his numerical patterns are demonstrated, discussed, or argued about, the main linchpin of the entire premise is based on pure fantasy from his own warped mind. So in this, he states that H equals 5. Well, why should we accept that H equals 5? I say H equals 7. What about that? Now, if we add them up, then the number is a mirror of itself, the number 11. So not only is he assigning numbers randomly for no damn good reason, but he compounds the insane idea by saying that the numbers themselves have substance. The numbers are real. If I'm claiming that everything's a mirror, that everything's created from the inside out like our body, that this is a living system, okay, that numbers are alive, where I found um, how energy is preserved and how all um, information is... is for evolution is, is preserved in DNA. Okay. Oh, my namesake, and that's the equation. It's the name of God that I decrypted. Listen to my call from around my, so, from around my throne. And if any, uh, I think, hopefully, you'll, you'll see where the physics is in this. And God discusses discuss is the spirit, this energy, in the form of a woman. It's pretty erotic. So no longer is it the numerical expression of ideas. It's reality of itself. That would be like claiming letters and words are substance. Saying the words bomb exploding, for example, would no longer be the expression of the idea of that occurrence, but now when we say bomb exploding, it would actually be a bomb exploding. So would you like to see more crazy shit from this guy? I don't know about you, but I sure as hell would. And he said, as your personal physician, I never met him. I'm concerned about your self-abuse. He said, it's in mankind's nature to war. You can't stop it from there being another Vietnam. I can't remember the rest of the conversation, but it pretty much ended. 64 doubled is 128 equals 11 is 2. 128 doubled is 256 equals 13 is 4. 256 doubled is 512 equals 8. 512 doubled is 1024 equals 7. 1024 doubled is 2048 equals 14 is 5. But yeah, everything conforms to this model. Everything, no matter what. The Earth, the solar system. I mean, they've called it the, the, the music of the spheres forever. Yeah. Um, because you know that the planets are resonating with each other. The way gravity and the way dark matter interacts with everything, it's all music. It's all harmonics. Spirit always cuts magnetism in the center. Ab ha with our lips, we're saying it in here. Because it's a song, it's like the nightingale, it's a bird, it's much faster. So the, the ah, you, the ah is guttural, but the way we're so the B You're becomes, the B and H, I'm doing it all at once, the B and H just become the tube, the shape, just the, 
that's the one two four that's the one two four eight seven five that's the coil that does it that stays but the three nine six is the energy it's releasing which is the one but the one in the LF which represents the vowels actually taps into the three nine six I don't fully understand how Charlie well he says that this is a machine or a new kind of engine for advanced spacecraft. He says it's a new source of energy, free energy. All we need to do is put it all together. And that's where the donut comes in. Uh, not, not this donut. Yeah, that's the one. The Roden Coil. The all new and improved free energy device that is going to save the world and the universe as we know it. The saying is, is he who controls magnetism controls the universe. Okay. It's like he who makes a better mousetrap, okay? I've, I am going to tap into this spirit, this emanation. What this is, is it's a hole, it's a nozzle, okay? He who makes a better nozzle wins the race. You could figure out every secret about biology. You could figure out everything to be known. about magnetism, electricity, and even spirit. So here's a quiz for you. How is this donut and this donut alike? Correct, neither one of them does shit. The first one can create energy if you consume it, thus converting it to fuel, highly fattening fuel. The rodent coil operates from chi, or the access of the spirit where it draws its energy. Once this happens, both a black hole and a white hole open at its center nozzle. Now the energy output is remarkable if it worked, but it doesn't. Not in any way Marco says it does. Now, people who have constructed the coil have always connected it to an electric source, thus turning it into some kind of electromagnetic toy. What fascinates me is that it's almost 2013, more than 20 years after Marco's great discovery, and he is no closer to using this for anything practical from the day he started. Nor has anyone who has followed in his footsteps. The only thing that he's been able to generate with this idea is cash. On his site, at the top of the page, we can see three things. The illustration for the fingerprint of God, the title, and the donate button to his PayPal account. Marco isn't shy about asking for money. He once asked a major university for a $2.5 million investment into his research and development. They didn't give it to him. <clears throat> He's also not shy in his claims of support and accolades from the science community. But the fact is that, well, he lies. Within six months, I was selected by Defense Science Magazine, which is the biggest military publication in the world by James Martin, the editor, as having the most revolutionary propulsion system ever created for outer space. The truth is, there is no such publication as Defense Science Magazine, nor of this fictitious editor. There is. Dennis Watts. Uh, I don't know. I don't think his low quotes letters there is, actually. We just have to take my word for it. Electrical Engineering Systems Integration Plan Arizona. He's the least one able to anticipate, prevent, or keep going. I don't think, see, his big endorsement at the beginning Suffice to say that he said that what I discovered makes this, that this energy is real, it can be tapped into. I could dig up the letter. Susan has it if I had to have it. The truth is that the only thing Dennis Watts sent to Marco was his resume. He was looking for employment and mistakenly took Marco's group as a viable research company when the only real research that was going on was the study of their own bank account. In fact, Marco and his friends became so good at begging for money that they began teaching others how to do the begging for them. After all, Marco isn't getting any younger. And this brings us to Randy's Donut. Randy Powell is one of Marco's students who has learned all of the tricks of making vortex-based mathematics look real. Not only has Mr. Powell mastered the crazy eyes and balding look required for the job, but he has also managed to outdo his master in bullshit. Listen to the new set of claims Randy's powerful imagination has come up with. We believe that we can tap what has been referred to as the zero point energy sometimes referred to as free energy. What we have is the grand unified field theory. With it, you can create an exhaustible free energy 
end all diseases, produce unlimited food, travel anywhere in the universe, build the ultimate supercomputer, artificial intelligence, and obsolete all existing technology. Do you feel like you need to make a real difference in the world today and for the future? Do you have an extra couple hundred bucks just lying around collecting unhealthy dust? Then send it to Randy's Donut today and make the world a better place for Randy. You won't be alone. The Punisher himself, actor Thomas Jane, is now involved in the promotion of Randy's Donut. Hi, my name's Thomas Jane and I've uh, recently had the opportunity to talk to Randy Powell and learn about this uh, vortex-based math stuff. And it absolutely makes sense. Randy's Donuts have the potential to possibly change the world in the way that we think about the structure of the universe and how we utilize energy and power. Hey Thomas, I'm into real estate and I'm currently in a position to sell you your own star. And I'm talking a real one like, you know, like out in space. You can even put your own name on it. It's a five million dollar value, but for you, 500 bucks. Hey, wait, 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 wait. This is John Wayne's shoe, sold at auction for 10 grand. For you, 200 cash. Okay, that's not fair. After all, anybody can fall for a scam. Even smart people like Hollywood actors. Besides, there's a documentary and book in the works for Randy's vortex-based magical donut. Now that certainly gives some credibility to the project, doesn't it? The LA-based film company is right this moment taking donations to make this happen. The company is TBLN Films, owned by none other than the famous director, Jose Escamilla. Here's the president of TBLN Films to tell us all about it. My name is Curtis Hedges, and I am the president of TBLN Films. I've recently partnered up with Neverending Light Productions to produce Randy Powell's first film on vortex-based mathematics. My name is Randy Powell. I'm a senior researcher at the Vortex-Based Mathematics Project, which was founded by my teacher Marco Rodin. Vortex machine sucks things in at the top and shoots them out at the bottom. So our goal is to create an apparatus of funding in order to pursue research in this area, also to produce a film and a book documenting this and opening it up to the public to get everyone involved. My company, Raw Studios, is going to produce Randy's book. It's going to be simple, there's going to be a lot of pictures. Um, it's going to be easy to understand, but it's also going to be technically accurate. With your support, we can take this great project and we can make it fantastic. So please, support Randy's Donuts. So this is Thomas Jane, please contribute to the cause. This is Super Soylent and thank you for watching. So, and, and what this all has to do is, this is all has to do with labyrinths and mazes and um, matrices, and that's what this is. <sighs> I have found the reason the universe curves and warps. Einsteinian relativistic physics is sometimes referred to as the curvature of space-time reality. Okay? And the truth is, is I'm using their words, but I'm meaning different things. So, I'm actually, I'm actually a sitting duck for criticism and ridicule because I because they have their own definitions by these words and I have my own definitions. I actually use the subatomic particles and the energy itself as the propulsion system. Let me give you an example then. You know, I, w I was taught by by little league kids about death traps. I've been taught by the best. So I make a subatomic motor with no moving parts and I'm harnessing this emanation which cannot be seen as a work wheel. So I'm claiming that I found the energy above the known elements, elements that is responsible for the curvature and warpage of the space-time reality of the universe. I know it seems like I'm uh, out of my mind, 